Welcome to the CB&Q in Wyoming. I'm Mark Pruitt, Chief Cook and Bottle Washer. Today is the third of the month, so this must be another layout update. Today is March 3rd, in fact, and this is layout update number 16. I got quite a bit done on the layout this month. I added static grass on the Chicago Northwestern line above Casper. I started scenery with the help of a friend on the far end of Casper, away from the roundhouse, where I'll talk back in the corner. I got the basic construction finished for the oil tank loading racks. And just in the last couple of days, I started to put together a kit that's almost as old as I am. That's this kit, the Campbell HO loading tanks. Sorry, I forgot what it was. You can see two of the tanks sitting next to me here. They're painted and they're about ready for continued assembly. So without further ado, let's get going on the layout update for this month. At the end of last month's update, I would barely started scenery in Casper. I had put down a layer of my sifted real dirt in the far left back corner. As I found out when the dirt dried, it didn't work out so well. It turns out that the soil here has a lot of clay in it. It expands when wetted and contracts again as it dries. Result? Cracks. This just would not do. I called my friend Kurt for some advice and a few days later he came over to show me how he does dirt and ground cover on his layout. Kurt arrived on the 4th of February about 1 p.m. First order of business was to scrape off the failed attempt at ground cover, after which Kurt painted a very thin layer of soupy plaster on the area. The fan was used to speed the plaster drying time. When the plaster was more or less dry to the touch, Kurt mixed up a batch of tempera brown paint and applied it over the plaster. He immediately moved on to sifting on some tempera pigment, powdered earth, and powdered plaster that I'd mixed up beforehand. This was spritzed with water mixed with a bit of alcohol. The alcohol made the water soak in easily and the water activated the plaster to bind everything together. Without stopping, we, and by we I mean Kurt, moved on to add a variety of greenery to the dirt. I didn't stop to get a screenshot of this because I was busy handing Kurt landscaping materials. It was all the basic stuff, woodland scenics and JTT ground foam, foliage and so on. The CNW line to Lander is late October, but here in Casper it's early summer, so there's a lot of green. In another six weeks, most of the ground cover and grasses will be yellow and brown. Only the weeds and bushes will still be green by that time. After thoroughly soaking everything with very diluted white glue, Kurt moved on to the next section of the corner. After only a bit over three hours, that corner was looking real good. It even had the beginnings of a lightly traveled dirt road. It was now just a bit after four o'clock. I had learned a lot, but as I was soon to discover, I hadn't learned quite enough. The next day, after the initial layers were dry, I worked on improving the dirt road by adding several thin layers of my very fine sifted real dirt, which I simply call dust. After a few hours, I think I came out with a pretty respectable dirt road. Heck, somebody even came along to try it out. Emboldened beyond all reason, I forged ahead on the other side of the spur. First, I painted on the thin plaster. I covered a fairly large area, then hit on using the tempera pigments to tint the plaster. This eliminated the need for the interim paint layer. And then came the tempera slash plaster dirt mix, preceded by a wetting layer of alcohol, followed by another wetting with alcohol to set it all in place. Looks pretty okay, doesn't it? Boom! The next day it was all loose. Nothing had stuck to the painted on plaster or to itself at all. After a quick consult with Kurt, I had the answer. I had wetted everything with straight 70% alcohol, which inactivates the plaster. No wonder it didn't stick. So on Valentine's Day, I scraped off the mostly loose mess and began again. If you look close, you can see where I scraped a bit too vigorously in a few spots. A little painted on plaster soup took care of those and left me with some nice variations in ground level. 
Now I was going at it in earnest. No tub of plaster was going to get the better of me. I moved everything down to the roundhouse end of the yard and got to work. By the 16th, I had the new dirt layer in place all over the east end of the yard. I would have gone further, but I have to add missing ties under rail joints, so I stopped where you see. A couple days later, after adding some more dirt to some bare spots and giving everything time to dry, the dirt was properly stuck to the plaster this time. I know, I tested it with my fingers and with a shop vac. I just couldn't wait any longer, so I mixed up some of my backyard dirt with Woodland Scenic Cinder Ballast and started ballasting that spur you've been looking at. I wanted to get at least one bit of track actually finished in Casper. So the evening of the 18th, all worldly cares were put aside and I devoted my full attention to ballasting that spur. Don't worry, it's a short clip. The next day, I painted the rails and touched up the ballast as needed. Then I parked a flat car on the spur and took this shot. I hadn't painted the rail end ties buried in the ballast mound at that point. I just did that a few days ago. And how did I get that flat car onto that spur? I'm glad you asked. With a yard switcher, of course. I got a new cell phone with a much better quality camera a few days before, and I was itching to try it out. With the spur at least partially finished, I moved on to a bit of scenery on the dirt layer by adding a much larger and more traveled dirt road across the benchwork. This road provides access across the yard to the ice house, the caboose hut, and Rocky Mountain Drilling's office and pipe yard, uh, none of which are built yet. I built up the road over a couple of days. It turns out the diluted white glue I used to glue down the dust and real dirt layers on the road stained the ground cover to the sides. No worries though, I sifted on a bit more tempera dirt on the sides and covered it. What's left will be handled by what greenery will grow here. And right away, commercial trucks began taking advantage of the new road. Why, I have no idea. They don't have anywhere to go yet. And that's it for the scenery efforts in East Casper this month. Let's back up a few days now and look at the oil loading rack. All through the month, I was bouncing between the Casper scenery and finishing the loading rack. Oh wait, you didn't really think I did a half hour's worth of scenery during the day and that was it, did you? No. After doing what I could with Casper scenery, I moved over to the workbench and fought with the oil rack kits. Finally, on the 22nd of the month, I completed the assembly of eight kits. I set them on the front edge of Casper yard to glue them into one big unit. Then I moved them to the final home and did this flyover. Yes, I'm still playing with my new phone. Here's a close-up of one section. The rack still needs painting and lighting. From what few photos I can find, the standard oil company racks in Casper were black, so painting them should be pretty easy. Lighting, on the other hand, should be very interesting. I'll wait to light the rack until I have most of the rest of the model parts of the refinery in place, then light the whole shebang at once. That'll probably take more than one layout update just to deal with that. Oh, and I took a couple of hours early in the month to further light-proof the roundhouse. It looks like there's only a few spots left that need work. I spent over 40 hours the last part of the month putting together episode 1 of my new series, Building Casper. I posted it a couple of days ago. When you get really bored, check it out. It goes into detail about how I developed operating concepts and goals for the yard, plus a lot of other stuff. In a month or so, episode 2 will be out, which talks about the actual planning of the yard from track plans to facilities and such. Just in the last few days, I got back to the CNW line and added a few more feet of grasses and weeds along the line. And finally, during the odd days between everything else, I assembled three AccuRail cars, these two Burlington Refrigerator Express reefers and this CB&Q boxcar. And we're done. Next month, I'll try to extend the scenery on the CNW 
farther towards Hudson and make additional scenery progress in Casper as well. I have more static grasses and some scratch building supplies coming in a few days, so I should also be able to start building some of Casper's industries on the east end. Check out my website for more modeling information on this and previous layouts. The web address is on the screen and I'll put a link in the description. Thanks for watching everyone. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next month.